What can you power with an energy flex generator? Let's talk about it. Okay, so if you haven't watched my first impressions video with the flex generator, talking about the strategy, talking about the modular aspects of the system, go and check that out before you watch this one. I wanted to do a bit of a demonstration today to show you what exactly you can power with a 1500 watt continuous inverter solar generator like this. This is a pure sine wave inverter. It's a modular system. It'll actually go up in my testing to around 2000 to 2100 for a short period of time. And there is a 3000 watt surge which will last for about you know a fraction of a second or so. That's for those uh, electronics which require a high amount of power just to get started. Now, right now, we are pretty much powering everything. We're powering this lamp. We're powering this Tesla Starlink satellite, even though it's not obviously outside, it's inside for demo purposes. And it would be using a couple hundred watts more power if it was actually outside. So keep that in mind. We're also powering this small heater which takes a decent amount of energy, a couple hundred watts anyways. It's a very small heater. Normally heaters can take a lot of power. It's not a very efficient use of your limited power supply to waste it on heat, but that's just a demo to show how much stuff you can actually have hooked up to this at once. We have our Bluetooth speaker, which is charging. We have our shortwave radio for long range comms, which is charging. We have a phone, which shows the image that I'm seeing on the camera right now. We have our Baofeng amateur radio. We have our overkill 100,000 lumen emollient floodlight. We got a miniature kettle that we're boiling water with. We had this fan powering up, but the thing is it's kind of loud and it's gonna interfere with the microphone if I turn it on, okay? And we also have this cooler, which is running right now. You can run a fridge off one battery, depending on the size of the fridge, between eight to 20 hours. Now, the more batteries you have, the better. I would recommend if you are looking for a permanent in-home emergency solution to get at least two or three extra batteries. I believe the batteries, I'm not sure exactly of the price, but I will post the price on the screen. I know you do get a bit of a discount if you do the pre-sale thing. Now, bear in mind that most of these are incredibly low drain devices. The phone, the radios, the flashlight, the Bluetooth speaker, even the light, are very low drain devices. So you can literally power probably 20 devices like that concurrently, no problem whatsoever. The cooler is around 150 watts. The fan is a little over 100 watts. The heater is a couple hundred watts. And the Tesla, when it's activated, is gonna be a couple hundred watts. But we wanna push this thing a little bit more just to see how far we can push it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this heat gun which can basically go up to around 2000 watts. And we're going to unplug one of these things. We're gonna unplug the lowest, and we also have a tablet here that's plugged in and charging. We're gonna unplug something that is not taking a whole lot of energy right now. Now, some people might be a little concerned that there's only a couple USB outputs. All you have to do is get yourself one of these, these multi USB outputs, and this will plug in via AC and that's gonna provide enough USB outputs for every possible USB device in your family's arsenal. Okay, so currently we're actually charging the unit from the wall just to simulate the effect that you would have with solar. Now, as you can see, this uh, number here at the bottom, that's the amount of input that you're receiving from the wall, so 218 watts, and our net discharge is 329 watts. That means that right now we're discharging a little over 500 watts. And let me show you how that works. So if I unplug this, now you're gonna see discharging 549 watts. So what it was doing, it was subtracting the amount that we were discharging from the amount that we were inputting, giving us around 350 net discharge. Now we have a 550 watt net discharge. With this amount of battery power, that means that we're gonna be able to discharge this at this rate for about two hours, more or less. But now we're gonna crank it up a notch. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn on the heat gun and the heat gun at its lowest setting isn't that bad. 
Okay, it's only pulling about 90 watts or so. But let's crank it up to mid-range. It immediately jumps up to 1,533 watts, okay? Now we're gonna crank it up once again. We're gonna go for broke this time. And she shuts down, okay? So that was totally expected because what we did is we exceeded the inverter's capability. And I just wanted to demonstrate that for you so that you could see exactly what would happen if you exceed the inverter's capacity. Energy has built in a lot of safety features in order to protect not only you, but protect your product as well. Now, if there is some sort of malfunction, this little button on the side here will pop out. It's kind of a circuit breaker. You just push that button back in and then the device will reset itself. So let's see if we can turn this sucker back on again. Okay, here we go. So we're back to our 650 watts. Okay, let's crank her up again, 633. 1500 here we go we're gonna we're gonna try to blow our load one more time sorry about the visual what i seen there is it went up to around 2800 watts now they say 3000 watt surge i'm getting around 2850 surge if i just turn it up for a second you can see there let me go up for a second Goes up to 2,500 watts, no problem. 2,844. If you were to get a couple more batteries on here and you are running this thing at 1,500 watts continuous, that means you would have three kilowatt hours, okay? So to discharge three kilowatt hours running 1,500 watts is gonna take around two hours. So even with three batteries, running this kind of load is not going to be sustainable long term. This is just to demonstrate this unit can actually power all of these devices at once. Something like this, a heat gun, you're only going to need it maybe for a few minutes at a time. You know, maybe you're only going to need many of these devices for a few minutes at a time. And a lot of the lower wattage devices, which are just charging themselves, aren't going to be a big drain on the system at all. The main things that you're going to be powering are your smaller appliances like your uh, DC powered frying pans, your DC powered kettles, your coolers, your fridges, uh, even a microwave. I powered uh, the microwave using this. And with that demonstration, I was able to run it up to 2000 watts continuously for several minutes without the thing shutting off. Now for most people, this is going to provide you with a complete solution for most of your mobile and small scale emergency needs. This will power major appliances, but only one at a time. This is not gonna be a whole house solution like a Tesla Powerwall or other products that we're gonna be talking about on the channel in the future, which are going to run you north of $10,000, okay? Anything sub $5,000 right now, I would say that this is one of the most ideal systems. You can buy systems right now which are higher wattage output, but the thing that nobody ever thinks about is the fact that almost any device which requires that amount of power, barring like a dryer, for instance, which you'd probably never use in a grid down situation, you would just dry your clothes outside. It would make no sense to waste a day's worth of solar collection drying your clothes. That would just be the most wasteful thing you could possibly do. The biggest appliances that are going to use north of 3000 watts, these are things that even those units are not practical to power those things. Like you can go and buy a Goal Zero Yeti, a 3000 or 6000, and it's gonna cost you almost $10,000. And the, the problem with that is, is that you're only gonna be able to discharge that amount of power for so long, and you can only hook so many solar panels up. So unless, if, if you really want to achieve that level of self-reliance, you really have to step it up to the next level and that's a whole home solution which gets you north of ten thousand dollars for myself personally i like the portability i like the modularity i like the fact that there may be other head units may be other head units coming in the future so if you did want that potential to 
you know, have maybe a, a future unit that pumped out 3000 watts in inverter, or you had multiple batteries, or maybe you just wanted to buy the DC unit, but you wanted an interchangeable battery system. You wanted the supercharger. So the modular aspect of this system, I think is what really sells it. And the fact that they've done it well is something I haven't seen a lot of companies do. I've seen some companies do modular systems, but they are very case specific and they aren't so open-ended. So you can only have one battery or one extra battery and uh, you can't stack and customize the system like you can with this. And I will say that this is very much a plug and play unit, but for people who are, are very technical, for people who are very familiar with their gear and their solar technology, uh, Energy has thought of every possible thing and they are very transparent. There's no other company that's doing this right now where you have the actual engineers and, and owners and managers of the company actually fielding questions in real time on their YouTube channel. So that's saying something in my opinion in this space where there's a lot of companies right now just flooding the market with stuff, with technology they don't really understand thoroughly. They have a really basic grasp on it but I've tested some products recently, which there have been some dangerous, dangerous oversights. I'll just leave it at that. So I have no allegiance to energy, okay? I've really tried other companies and none of, they've always fallen short in terms of what they deliver. And I, I just haven't had the, the most positive experiences with any of those units. So there's something simple about what energy is doing here, even though it's not very aesthetically pleasing to the eye compared to some of the other designs, it is by far and away the one generator, if I had to take just one on the road because the shizzy was hitting the fizzy, it would be this one, hands down. Actually, it would have been the Apex before, now it will be this one. This one isn't a full production unit yet. Oh, something just happened there, oh. That thing just popped out. So I just wanted to show you guys this because I know there's a lot of people who are getting into this space. They don't really understand lithium generators that well. They see these ads on Instagram and maybe, you know, I just don't want you to get swindled into buying something which is not going to work. Like I said, I have tried to criticize energy in the past. It always proves to be the most reliable generator. You know, I've, I've challenged the company. Many people have challenged the company. They listen to their customers. They incorporate the feedback into their future products. So, you know, I'll give them that. I'm not saying that it's not without improvements. There's still a lot of things that could be improved on it. I've talked about some of those things in the last video. I do think that we're gonna need a larger inverter at some point. That should go without saying, okay? Especially if you have infinitely stackable, not infinitely, but you can stack up to 96 batteries on this. If you have that, come on, you need a larger in inverter at some point, provide that option to people. But I also understand why 1500 for an application like this is more than sufficient for the time being. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'd be glad to answer them to the best of my capability. And maybe the energy nerds will pop in to answer some as well. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, Go through the link in the description, it helps support the channel and you'll also get some pretty good discounts. I believe you get a hundred bucks off, don't quote me on this, and you also get an extended warranty if you do the pre-sale thing. You'll be one of the first people to get one of these babies in a couple months. So, check it out. Thanks for watching guys, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.